A police officer and a 40-year-old bystander have been killed in a daylight robbery of a bullion van in a community very close to the timber market here in Accra. Two others are also battling for their lives after they were shot by the armed men. According to eyewitnesses, the man, after shooting the police officer in the head, took his gun and destroyed the locks of the vehicle before carrying away an unspecified amount of money. Watch this. <laughs> a chaotic scene as it was. Maxwell Agbagba is there right now. And let's talk to him. Maxwell, what is happening right now? We'll get Maxwell Agbagba uh, on the line shortly. But this is just one of recent, a recent spate of armed robberies there. These people you see in the video are those who were around when it happened. We're told that the bystander who was killed apparently has seen these people and they shot her as well. They shot the police officer who, as you can see here, was perhaps accompanying this bullion van. They took his, they took his gun, destroyed the locks on the bullion van and have carried away some money. Maxwell, Maxwell, uh, tell us what is happening at the scene right now. Well, give to you asking what is happening here. Well, it's it's a bit noisy here, very difficult to hear you back. Um, we are currently um, at the crime scene. We have crime scene investigators um, who are going around taking the necessary um, evidence um, here. Um, what is happening right now? We also have some members of the SWAT team who arrived on the ground about an hour ago. Just some minutes ago, also we had the mayor um, of Accra coming here to commiserate um, with the family. Well, just to tell you exactly how it happened, we are told um, that this bullion van here um, was actually transferring um, some cash um, to an unknown destination. Just some minutes when he got to he got to this spot, it was crossed by a taxi driver, we are told. So that um, lowered the speed a bit for um, the bullion van. So at the time that it stopped, we are told that Six men um, on different motorbikes um, accosted the driver of the vehicle, and we are told that that resulted in the shooting um, of the driver. And then an armed police officer who was escorting the bullion van was also shot um, in the head. If you come here, there are, there's blood splattered on the floor uh, right now as I'm speaking um, to you. The bullion van also, you can still see the bull, uh, you can see the bullet holes um, on the vehicle. We're told that the robbers fired indiscriminately in this heavily um, populated um, community. We're told the entire operation lasted for about um, three minutes to the extent that some of the community members actually tried blocking um, some of the exits here um, just some meters away from where I'm standing. I'm told um, that the robbers realized that so they used a different um, exit point to get out of this um, community. Many of the people I've been speaking to are shocked about the brazen manner which um, the incident happened uh, here. Now, a woman who sells in a convenience um, store here was um, hit by the, uh, 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 by the bullets that was fired um, by the robbers. We are told that she operates the convenience store that is here. One of the um, bullets that was fired actually um, penetrated this barrel that is here. So you can see the bullet hole on this barrel, very visible. One, the first one I'm um, here penetrated the top, and then the second one penetrated the down. And um, 
After penetrating, while she was hiding in this room, we are told that the bullet penetrated this point. She was standing, and then they hit her in the neck, and that was what um, killed her, according to eyewitnesses. Quite a number of people are gathered in a home um, who I gathered in a home commiserating with the family. It's all tears um, for them. I have a woman here who is quite concerned about the um, issue. I want her to speak to me, but we don't want to show her face. Um, okay, well, I'll try and get her to talk to us. But we have the husband of the uh, woman who was killed in the incident. Let's speak to him. Let's find out from him how the family is taking this. It's all tears for the family here. This is the mother of the woman who was killed, 40-year-old bystander who was just doing her business on a regular day, normal day doing her business. And this unfortunate incident, um, she got caught up in this unfortunate incident. Let's, let's speak to the husband of the um, deceased. So you're welcome to join me. Good afternoon. How did you hear this terrible news? First of all, condolences to you. How did you hear this terrible news? I was caught on the phone but a young, by a young lady to be told that my wife is lying in a pool of blood. But then I was far from home, so I have to rush over here. And I came to, it's true, when I came, it was true that the body has been taken to the police mug. So it's not even seen the body yet. When was the last time you spoke to her? We spoke yesterday, several times. We spoke in the night. Discussed about the children. And the time for me to call is around 12 o'clock. Only to be informed that she's been killed. That's all. How many children do you have? We have three boys. Three boys. So, who, who is this girl? Who is, she, who is this girl? The little girl. How safe? Okay. Yeah, we brought her from the village to come and live with her. How is the family taking you have, you have our condolences. Yeah, our condolences, sir. So, um, it's all crying up here, uh, we're all bailing. Um, so this is the, this is the building where the woman escaped to. We are told um, that there was an accountant in the bullion van. So it was the driver. Um, we also had an accountant to the vehicle and then a sales girl. The driver was shot in the hand, and then the police officer, we were told by our witnesses, was shot in the head. He died on the spot. We were told at the point that they shot him in the head, he died. The armed man um, reached out for his gun. They had taken that gun away, we are told. The sales girl who was in the backseat of the vehicle, we were told, tried escaping from this end. She was targeted by the robbers. They shot at her, but they missed it. And then a woman who was hiding um, in the shop got hit uh, by the um, by the bullet, and then she died on the spot. So two people have died on the spot. The police officer, and then this 40-year-old bystander who has three children. The husband is standing here, and um, it's indescribable. The mood here is indescribable. I have quite a number of people who are concerned about the situation. I don't want to show her face. Um, so, madam, can you talk to me? Um, you are raising some concerns. Can you, can you turn your face? I don't want you to show your face here. Okay. You are raising some concerns about the speed of crime, the increase in crime in the capital especially. What are your concerns? <sighs> it's always happened. I've been seeing it in the television. But this time, it's on my own. And it's very painful. Who is the woman to you? The woman is my sister-in-law. Okay. My big brother had a wife. Mm. And uh, for the look of things, I am saying... The government should, uh, should be very smart in our borders. Because mm. one, I am suspecting we Ghanaians, even though we have criminals among us, mm. but the way things are going now, these are, the, these are a, a plan and the masterminding from the Nigerians. I will never ever deny it. I will say it and repeat it again. I say this is a master plan from the Nigerians. So the government have to take serious note about it. 
so that there will be peace in our country. Yeah, but, but, but we have convinced? our own country, why but we don't have peace. Why are you convinced the other I'm ones? This, this kind of things. Okay, please, I don't want to show your face. Yeah, this kind of things. If it's not organized by a serious criminal in our country, how can this happen? Mm. From my infant to my adult, I haven't heard this thing before. And it's serious. Mm. Don't wait till you reach your turn. Start doing something about it. What, what kind of woman was the deceased? What kind of... The woman is my sister-in-law, yeah. and she's very good. Very, very, very good. We haven't heard anything about him that she has done this, so because of that, the arm robbers have to come and kill her. No. But if we are safe here, I don't think this thing will happen. So that's all that I can say. I understand she was escaping from the gunshots. Yes. When we came, that's what, that is what they told us. They said she was in the room. Somebody is going to buy something, so she's going to take it from, for her. But there is a teller up in the in the van. Yeah, okay. She was trying to escape. Mm. So when the, uh, the, the the armed robbers saw that the person is uh, running, yeah. they told this woman the one who was coming is the one. So they directed the bullets on her, and she died. You have our condolences, madam. Our Thank condolences. you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, as I speak to you, Gifty, um, quite a number of people are, are flooding the residents of the bystander who was killed in this incident. Um, I saw some members of the SWAT team, they arrived on the ground, uh, many of them visibly um, shaken by the um, incident. Um, in fact, one of the commanders who we met here was not willing to speak to us because he said he's not in a position to, you know, um, to speak to us at the time because he was shaken by the um, incident. The mayor of Accra, who was also here, was also shocked by the brazen manner which this incident happened. Um, he was shocked that a heavily populated community like this. Maybe we want to show you the crowd, um, show you the people who are um, gathered here. This is the community. This is what it looks like. It's busy with activities. This is, this is very close to the timber market. It's an enclave for business activities. And nobody expected this to happen um, here in this community. And the residents here tell me that they are equally you know, um, shocked um, by it, Gifty. Maxwell, it's, um, it's a lot of emotions going on right now and it's a very, very disturbing um, matter. I understand that the police officers who have come are unable to speak to you because they probably do not have the clearance. Um, but we see that they are taking, you know, some pictures and analyzing um, the, 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 crime, the crime scene. Have they given you any information, I mean, behind the scene, not necessarily an official information of what they've picked up so far? Well, they will not speak to us. Um, these are officials from the Criminal Investigations Department. We tried getting some information from them, but they feel that any information at this point would compromise with the um, investigation. So they are tight-slipped and they are not willing to give us any information at this point, except going around and taking the necessary evidence um, that will be, uh, I mean, that will be needed uh, um, to arrest the um, perpetrators. At this point, um, I see about three police officers also um, behind them, making sure that the residents do not get into um, this cordant area to compromise with the um, evidence that they need to, you know, um, collect at this point. So now they are all tight slipped, not willing to give us any information. It's just the um, residents who are here um, expressing shock and disgust at what they say is becoming um, the trend. They tell me um, they, they cite the uh, uh, um, the incident that happened very close to the police headquarters, they cite the Peck Farm robbery, they cite the Gimpa one, and they say that it's about time that our authorities had a grip of the um, situation. They are saying that Accra is no longer becoming safe. They say that if armed robbers, six of them, um, could actually storm this community, heavily populated area in the day to commit such a dastardly act, they wonder what they will do you know, um, in the dark. They wonder what they would do on a lonely um, highway. They wonder what they would do, you know, uh, 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 in places where there are not many people. So that is the concern of the um, residents. Many of them told me that, in fact, they saw the incident. They saw it happening right under their eyes. They thought it was a movie. They just couldn't move in to help or do anything about it because the robbers were armed. And according to them, they were very brutish with the manner with which they were going about the things they were doing. They said they fight indiscriminately 
and not even the strongest of men here in this community could get close to uh, 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 to, 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 to try and salvage um, the situation, Gifty. Oh. Maso, let me find out. Uh, we know from what the eyewitnesses have told you that they took away the policeman's uh, um, rifle. Do, do you see that rifle there or did they take it away? Well, according to the eyewitnesses, um, after they shot the driver and then fired the police officer in the head, they just went straight and then picked the gun. Now, behind this bullion van, uh, we were told that there was a padlock. They used their gun to destroy the padlock. And then um, we were told there was a safe inside where the cash was. So after destroying the padlock, um, they picked the money, um, they picked the safe containing the money, and then they bolted with it um, on their motorbike. We are told that one of them actually took the gun, um, took the gun, and then bolted with it as they jumped onto, hopped onto the uh, motorbike. One of the community members here who I spoke to said he saw one of them, the one who took the gun. He said some of them were masked, the others were not masked, and what they used to conceal the identity was the helmet that they were using. So really, um, some of them they could not see their face, but the others who were not wearing masks, especially they tell me that those who were holding the gun were not masked. And from their conversation and from how they were speaking, the residents here, the eyewitnesses here, tell me that they did not sound um, like Ghanaians. And that is why um, the woman who I spoke to earlier was raising concerns about the uh, uh, influx of foreigners in this country. She thinks that that is also contributing to the heightened insecurity situation we are experiencing. The people I spoke to here tell me that the robbers did not sound um, like Ghanaians. And that's what they've been telling me here, Gifty. Maxwell, the, the uh, police officer who has been, first of all, has he been confirmed dead right now? Do we know? Yeah, from, from the police officers. We are told that he died on the spot. And we've seen the gory photo, the gory video um, when he was shot. You could see um, some of the people who watched the video thought that it was the brain gushing out. We are not in a position to tell what was gushing out, but there was a lot of blood that gushed out and was splattered on the street um, here. The woman who unfortunately was also caught up in the dastardly act was also um, in a pool of blood when we arrived here um, on the scene. She was carried um, to the Kolebu um, Teaching Hospital. So these two people, we can't confirm from what we've gathered from the authorities here, from the security personnel here. Two people have been confirmed dead. Two others, we're told, are battling um, for their lives. We're told that the driver got shot, and we've seen the video of him struggling to get out of his car. His white and um, long sleeved was soaked with blood. And then um, another person who escaped narrowly was a salesperson who was seated at the back seat of this car. She was the one who, we thought, escaped through this route. And um, they were trying to shoot at her, but they missed, they missed it. They missed that target. And so she's very lucky. Unfortunately, she's alive to tell, you know, the whole story about how, you know, uh, it happened. So two okay. confirmation, two that we can confirm that duty. Maxwell, if there's any information that we ought to share with our viewers, let's do so now. Otherwise, we'll leave you to get more information for us subsequently. Mm. Exactly. We'll be stationed here for some time, and we're still getting, I mean, we're still, we're still getting some information from the people who were here. It looked the case that many of them had to run to their rooms and watch the incident, you know, play out here from their rooms. So they all seem to have a similar account of, you know, what happened here. We'll be speaking to them, engaging them to try and understand the circumstances under which this incident um, happened. Maxwell, thank you very much. Maxwell Lagbaba joining us all the way from the Timba Market where this afternoon, this happened barely two hours ago, two people have been killed. One of them, a police officer, his gun, we're told, has been taken away by the, robbery, uh, by the robbers. Um, and the, the, there is a survivor, a survivor who, uh, who ran away from the vehicle and the shot meant for her ended up killing the bystander or the uh, trader whose family Maxwell spoke to. 
an absolutely devastated situation for the family members there. Maxwell Agbagba there, standing by, will be getting more information as and when it comes in the meantime.